in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts for penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it, it, for it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of, for our salvation, following on its footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we, who follow Christ the King in exultation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowd to acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, 
Let us go forth in peace.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they have accused you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, 
Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed, and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who had come in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom when the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am pleased to be with you once again in this national shrine and to be joined by so many who are following through television, radio, and the internet. As 
I assure you of the Holy Father's spiritual closeness as we enter together into this Holy Week. Allow me to offer special greetings to any people among us who have become Catholic in the past year, and to those who will enter in full, in a full communion with the Church in the days to come. My brothers and sisters, we cannot overstate the significance of the events that we commemorate this week. We live in a world that can seem utterly lost at multiple levels. At a global level, there are so many wars that it is like, as the Pope says, a third world war being fought piecemeal. Within nations, competition for political power is so fierce that, in its pursuit, the needs of the most vulnerable are neglected. For too many, even the family home is not a place of security. Precisely in this context, we as a church enter once more into the Paschal mystery with this assurance that comes from faith, the kingship of Jesus Christ, established on the cross, is the saving hope for all of humanity. What then does the kingship of Jesus look like? And how do we follow him as our king? Today's reading gives us the answers to these questions. In the first gospel reading by which we began this Mass, Jesus chose to enter Jerusalem seated on a colt. By doing so, he signified that he was the king whom the prophet Zechariah had foretold, the just savior who would be humble and who would enter the holy city, not as a warrior, but instead proclaiming peace to the nations. Upon coming into Jerusalem this, that day, Jesus accepted the people cries of Hosanna and the titles Lord and King. This acceptance of kinship by Jesus contrasts with the response he made earlier in his ministry. In John chapter 6, after he had fed thousands by multiplying bread and fish, the people were going to come and carry him off to make him king. But on that occasion, he withdrew from them in order to be alone. The hour, the hour, had not yet come for him to be glorified. And besides, the people's understanding of the glory was much different from his own. He knew that he could only manifest the glory of the Father's only Son by the death he would endure for sinners, not by display of worldly power. When Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to his throne in heaven, his version of kinship was vindicated. His humility had overthrown the pride of the devil. He had shown how justice for the poor and afflicted can win over, over greed for power. And he opened for humanity a way of peace, which brings more happiness than any victory than ever comes from war. Yet, yet, people struggle to accept this kingdom of Christ for the same reason that even his own disciples abandoned him. 
because following him to the end means sharing in his cross. The cross defies the logic of the world. And we have difficulty to understand that. Because to live the fullness of life means that we have to die to our own limited ideas, to find true happiness of to, to find true happiness in communion with our fellow man requires that we give up our personal agenda. We are like the people who wanted to carry off Jesus to be our king. We want him to be our king, but we don't want to share his kingship with everyone. Jesus, on the other hand, is a universal king. He wants to be the king of the whole mind, heart, soul, and strength. And he wants to be the king of all people. To follow him means involving every part of our own being and inviting every person into communion with him. Let's be concrete. The wars which plague our world, they will never cease as long as one side makes demands that another side cannot live with. The broken politics that breed frustration and contempt. We will never find unity as a people as long as profit and power are worth gaining at the expense of the poorest and the most desperate among us. The decay of family relations. Reconciliation will never occur as long as we cannot see in a person of our own flesh and blood one loved and redeemed by the blood of Christ. Brothers, sisters, to, be, to King Jesus, and this is the reason of our presence today, to belong to King Jesus mean in this world, dying to any number of agendas, ideas, and hopes which we are building as if it was our earthly kingdom. But it will be the most freeing thing of all because instead of an earthly queen kingdom, which is bound to fall eventually, we will have our place with Jesus in the heavenly kingdom, which lasts forever. So, as we begin Holy Week, let us indeed hail Jesus with Hosanna. 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 Why not? Hosanna. Hosanna as our king. But allow him to lead us to the true kingdom where dying to self has been revealed as the way to true life. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin our celebration of Holy Week, let us humbly ask God that in his mercy, he will hear and answer our prayers. That during this Holy Week, the church throughout the world will grow in devotion to God and be united with him through the gift of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God. That elected leaders will use their power to provide for the needs of those who are most vulnerable, especially the poor, immigrants and refugees, the abandoned and the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all catechumens preparing to receive baptism and to enter the church at Easter, for their sponsors and for their catechists, may God bless them with a renewed faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the homebound, and all those who carry heavy burdens in life, that God will grant them divine healing and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will follow Christ's example of faithful service as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special needs and intentions that we hold in our hearts, and for those enrolled in the National Shrine's Lenten Remembrance and Shrine Prayer Guild Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may know the fullness of life and peace in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be present, O Lord, to your people in prayer, and hear the desires of those who call out to you. May we be free from all harm and, by good works, show our dedication to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews or scan the QR code found in the worship leaflet or visit the National Shrine online as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. For the grace of the Lord is in you. For our good and all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that through, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through, though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, my brother Wilton, the bishop of this church, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of your service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted 
among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them and with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom of our Lord, 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 Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but only say the word and my soul shall be
Let us pray. Nourished with this sacred gift, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. With today's celebration of Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord, we've entered the most solemn week of the entire church year. We are grateful to his eminence, Cardinal Christophe Pierre, for being with us today and all throughout Holy Week. As many of you know, Cardinal Pierre is the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, and as such, his eminence is the personal representative of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to our country. We're delighted to have a standing room only crowd with us this noontime and I welcome all those who join us through our live stream broadcast and through the Eternal Word television network. It's also nice to see so many young people with us at this, this noon mass, especially our friends from Roncalli Middle School in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I am thankful as well to the Eternal Word television network for televising today's mass and throughout all of Holy Week. As we walk with the Lord this Holy Week, let us, in the words of Pope Francis, lift our eyes to the cross so that we can start living again, realizing that we are loved by Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.